Are not our hearts burning within us? Are not our hearts lighted with fire? Jesus is with us, is risen, is with us. Jesus is risen, is with us today. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Are not our hearts burning within us? Are not our hearts lighted with fire? Welcome. I am Father Ron Will, speaking to you from Precious Blood Renewal Center in Liberty, Missouri. Welcome to the second session of a seven parts Easter series that we are entitling The Journey to Emmaus in Contemporary Scenes. Just to refresh our memories a little from last week, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, we hear the story about on the original Easter Sunday, how two disciples left Jerusalem to go back home to Emmaus. They were just so disillusioned because they had all their hopes built up that this man, Jesus, was going to be the Messiah. And then they crucified him and put him in a tomb and uh, they just lost all their hope. And so they were going back home, downcast. And as they were walking along, the stranger walks with them. And he asked them uh, why they're so downcast. And and they explain, and the stranger starts telling them stories from the Old Testament that, and connecting these prophecies, and, and it helped, and he put two and two together, and, and these two disciples realized, oh my, this really was the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah that we were hoping for. And, and they got so uh, enthused that they ran back to Jerusalem with the words running through their mind that you may have heard in today's introduction, were not our hearts burning within us while we spoke to him on the way and opened the scriptures for us? Well, I've had my own Emmaus experiences, and I'm guessing that you have too. In this Easter series, I am having conversations with different persons each week to reflect on contemporary examples of that challenge us to put two and two together ourselves and to see that the kingdom of God is present now among us and it is unfolding in our midst, but sometimes we do not recognize it. It's Jesus is with us, but we don't realize it until a little later after reflecting on it. Today I am joined by Bernie and Jeannie Versu. Welcome. Bernie and Jeannie, thank you, Father Ron. Thank you for speaking and joining us. Just take a minute to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Jean Versu, and uh, Bernard and I have been married 57 years in August. <laughs> and we have, uh, I myself, have uh, uh, journeyed for many years in, with parish ministry. But in 14 years ago, we became companions to the Precious Blood. Uh, and that's when I realized that uh, the call of St. Gasper, who is our founder, his life was to serve the marginalized and the poor. And so uh, we re I really became involved with several organizations in St. Joseph, Missouri, where we used to live, and then here at Liberty. Presently, we're involved in two in as much ministry and, uh, and one city cafe in Kansas City to serve the needy and the poor. Good afternoon, my name's Bernie. I, uh, my journey began in 01 when I retired and I became very active in St. Joseph, Missouri with the Open Door Food Kitchen where I served for like 15 years. Many years I was on the board. And uh, two incidents. One was an elderly lady who worked with me that always had to inform me that <laughs> always remember you gotta see Jesus in everyone's face. And and it stuck with me. And the other thing was, uh, at the time, the uh, city manager, uh, the mayor of the city, uh, was kind of upset with where our kitchen was. So I had to go to the 
chamber to present our our issue to him. And uh, I remember asking him, well, what do you want us, me to do, Mayor, take our poor people out of the town? And he never answered me. And I knew right then <laughs> I was on the right track. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me today okay. and uh, joining us. I have a plaque here that was made. My, my brother Jerry is, loves to do woodworking, and he made this and gave it to me some years ago. Can you see what it says? Jesus. Now, you have to look at it at the right angle in order to see that word. And Sometimes I have this sitting on my a bookshelf in my room and somebody will look at it and they, they can't figure out what is, what is that messy words, uh, lines. And I have to shift them a little bit, uh, look at it from a little different angle. And, and then something clicks. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> well, sometimes that is a parallel experience to when I look at individual people, sometimes I, don't, I do not see Jesus. I just see an ir a person who's irritating me until I look at them at a different angle. One such experience for me, which was an Emmaus experience, was several years ago, after the Easter Vigil, I had uh, finished the, everything in the church, turned off the lights, and was ready to leave the church and go back to the rectory. And there was this man standing out there, and he was looking for help. And uh, he gave me his hard luck story, and I felt sorry for him, so I invited him into the rectory and I opened our refrigerator and I found some food and fixed him something to eat while I sat there talking to him. Well, he was hitchhiking and at that hour it was too late to, to get any rides. So we had a couple of guest rooms in the rectory so I invited him to sleep overnight. And he took off early the next morning. He was appreciative, but he took off early the next morning to try to catch a ride. We had two missions out that we took care of out of Linton, North Dakota. And I had morning mass at St. Bernard's Parish that morning. And as I drove out to St. Bernard's, something, I reflected on my experience the night before and something clicked. Oh my gosh, I met, I think I met Jesus last night and I missed him. I, I really kind of treated him rather rudely instead of treating him uh, kindly. And I, I felt embarrassed, and I admitted that what had happened when I went to began mass at St. Bernard's, and I re, I know I remembered that St. Bernard the saint said, "Treat all guests like Christ." Well, I had to admit I failed to do it that time. Bernie and Jeannie, have you had any kind of Emmaus experiences? Experiences something like what I had? Well, recently I have had one. We volunteered in as much food pantry, and on Tuesday and Thursday we have a lot of bread left over and sweets. So we, Bernard and I, we take them down to Midtown in Kansas City, and uh, to one of the facilities uh, we were took it several weeks ago. But on the journey down to the city and back, we recently have really uh, we have seen many, many homeless people, more so than normally. And I myself have said, well, look at those poor lost souls. And I feel hurt inside of me. I must, I wonder what our Lord feels. So two weeks ago when we took the bread down to our facility, when we pulled up, across the street was a woman and she was laying on a mattress. And as we got out of the car, before the men came out to take the, the goods, I said to Bernard, well, should I give her a loaf of bread or shall I give her some sweets? And I hesitated. And then I thought, the Lord said to feed the hungry. So I gathered a couple items and I took them over to her and I said, would you like some bread and sweets? And she said, oh yes. She had the most lovely smile and then she thanked me for it. And I went back to the car, we finished unloading and when we drove off, she waved at me with this beautiful smile. And after 
on the journey home, I thought, this, this is an amazing experience. I have met Jesus by offering bread, the simple thing, bread to this lady. So that's my Emmaus experience. I think mine started many, many years ago. Uh, I grew up in the uh, midtown section of St. Joseph. My grandparents were not rich. And I asked Grandma one day, what was the yellow brick uh, uh, in the corner of the house for? Well, between the uh, rectory and the marshalling yard for the rail, my grandmother's house is. And uh, she told me that's when they came by, if they saw that yellow brick, they knew they could be fed. And uh, that stuck with me the rest of my life. Wow. Thank you for your sharing. Another experience for me, I've had the experience, I used to live in St. Joe, and uh, we had a food pantry there out of St. Francis Xavier Parish, the House of Bread, and there was also a food kitchen there that occasionally I would help serve food. And I remember, I've had the experience of uh, sometimes being uh, kind of judgmental about uh, seeing the same people go through line week after week and it was easy for me to judge that they were taking advantage of the system. But when I forced myself to go around to the other side and sit down with them, talk to them, hear their story, what brought them there, it was a humbling experience. It was humbling for, for them to even to come ask for food. Sometimes in order to overcome their embarrassment, they had to put on a gruff face. But underneath, they were really hurting and humble. And, and I know that Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Or, when I was hungry, you did not give me food. <laughs> and uh, I have to be reflective when I come at the end of my life, come to the gate of heaven, what will Jesus say to me? Jeannie, Bernie, is there another experience in your life you'd like to share? Well, when we lived in St. Joseph also, we uh, had the experience of volunteering. It was called the Judah House in the Haven, and these were uh, facilities for men who had been living on the street. And so uh, our our volunteers was, we went once a month to cook dinner and we served it. Well, we always had the option not to stay. We could just serve it and leave. But uh, one week I said to Bernard, you know, we could just serve and leave. I mean, you know, does it really make that much difference? Although the men were always appreciative, but one evening, that same evening after I said it, uh, when one of the men went through the line, he said, looked up and he said to me, I want to thank you for preparing the food, but he said, I really want to thank you for staying and eating with us because that makes us feel like family. So at that experience, I thought it, it was how many times our Lord sat and shared meals. And, and, and not only should we not prepare the food, serve the food, but we should take the time to listen to their story. The same, the same uh, issue uh, as Father and Jeannie were talking about, uh, many of these people need, need the socialism sometimes more so than the food. They, they really want you to take and get involved in their pains and agonies. I mean, I remember one time up at the food kitchen, the father was talking about two young men came in, terribly anger in their face. And after they got the meals, I went and talked to them. Well, they had both just lost their jobs. And that, that's the last thing they wanted to do was be at a food kitchen. But I think talking to them really calmed them down somewhat. And I never did see them again, so hopefully they got a job. <laughs> but it, it, but like Father said, you, the food kitchen we were talking about, many times there was the same people coming in. And I remember that time I went to the city council, I had taken a survey and only 1% of the people that we served, and that was roughly 150 to 200 a week, 
uh, only 1% was homeless. The majority of them were low income, fixed income, and so forth. So anyway, you, you, you've got you to gotta get socially involved and, and physically involved with these people. They are human beings and they are Christ. Very good. Thank you for your sharing. Any other uh, reflections, closing comments before we close? I think that, you know, we just have to realize Christ said we would always have the poor with us, and that's very true, and we can become complacent about that, but I think we need to examine ourselves and say, how are we going to help the poor? How can I contribute to the help of the poor? To me, uh, uh, the, the times that Jeannie and I help uh, deliver the bread and, and work at the pantry, you get so involved that you forget what you're doing there, you know, <laughs> and you forgot to see Jesus. And, but then when you go home and contemplate what you just did, you, uh, you realize, you know, you, you saw Jesus, you just didn't say hi, <laughs> as you should. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for your sharing. You're welcome. No, thank I'm you, welcome, Father. Father. And thank all of you for uh, tuning in. My goal in sharing my own experience and having others share their experiences to, to raise your sensitivity, to raise your awareness, to, to look for and notice Emmaus experiences in contemporary scenes in your own life. So I invite you to come back next week as I share with another person on a different kind of a Emmaus experience. Before we leave one another today, let's close with a prayer. Jesus, sometimes we know you do, you really do come into our life and, and we miss you. We, we genuinely miss you, we just don't see you. But sometimes it's because we don't make the effort to see you. We are sorry, Jesus. Please forgive us. Open our eyes. Open our ears. Open our hearts today to recognize and respond to you with love. Amen. Are not our hearts burning within us? Are not our hearts lighted with fire? Jesus is with us, is risen, is with us. Jesus is risen, is with us today. Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the Lord. Are not our hearts burning within us? Are not our hearts lighted with 